Yo, welcome back to One More Mana. My name is Derek, and today we are getting into the top five most bruh worthy cards in Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth. I am, I would say, I would consider myself a casual Lord of the Rings fan, but this set still has me incredibly hyped. I am all about the pre-cons, all about the main set. There are so many exciting things in here, and I have some thoughts that my cat is definitely very tired of me yelling at him, so I'm happy to let it out to y'all instead. Before we get into the top five most bro-worthy cards, I know you're gonna want some of the cards in this set, some of those pre-cons, there's a lot of stuff going on. Head on over to TCG Player to do so. You can use the awesome feature on there to go ahead and search for your local game stores and help support them. And in addition, if you use the affiliate link down below, you can help support the channel. In the process, we always appreciate the love. And speaking of showing us love, another great way to do that is by rocking into the AM. You can use the discount code on screen to get a discount and support the channel. And obviously, I say this all the time, y'all don't wanna hear about it from me. I look like I rolled out of bed, my hair is in four different directions. I, who knows how long I've been wearing this shirt for. You're not here for my fashion advice, but who does have great fashion advice? It's Kenneth e. the Heathen. He's there to show you and teach you ways to be beautiful like him. So Ken, what you got for him this week? Hello, my name is Kenneth e. the Heathen. You know to rock your into the AM as Frodo always says, to infinity and beyond. Now, you might not be able to be as beautiful as I am or quote movies as perfectly as I do. You know, as uh, Gandalf once said, you know, I'll be back. But, uh, you can rock into the AM and, and do your best. So something about dripping in space and screaming. <laughs> Ken, just uh, a genius, uh, a beautiful genius. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and everything with us. We always appreciate your time. But yeah, listen to the man, rocked it into the AM and help support the channel. Now let's move in to the top five most bro worthy things in this set. I, like I said, I'm gonna just come out and say it. I love this set. It is amazing. I have very little bad to say about it period there are so many amazing designs it feels like that they're finding this balance between making really powerful cards that don't seem obnoxious for the most part and really really interesting designs it's just there's a lot lot to be excited about and this is i'm usually the one to latch onto a few cards and be like why is this printed nah. it's hard for me to do that and i'm very excited to say that well let's just we'll get into this list we'll start with number five and the number five most bro worthy thing on this list might be a little petty might be a little you might be like like why but i'm gonna say it anyway look there's a card called saruman the white and he's blue i think that's all that needs to be said there's another card that says something of many colors and he's three colors like i just i feel like it's a troll my guess is that they were just like you know what we killed it so much on this set everything is so like perfect to the t of making sure all these flavor things and art and everything is on point the characters all look amazing like all of that Let's screw with them, because that's the only thing I could think of, because Saruman, and the craziest thing is, you look at the art for Saruman the White, he definitely looks like he's 100% aware of the fact that he's like, ha, Saruman the White, but I'm a blue card, got him, like, he looks like he's scheming, and he looks like he's having fun with it, and I honestly feel kind of disrespected, it feels like he's being rude, and for that, I say, bruh, just leave, change your frame color, do something, because my OCD is not doing well with that. Now, at number four, the number four most bro worthy thing in this set is bro they figured out how to make the coolest high mana value legends ever in my opinion as far as like how to make them function for the longest time it felt like protection on commanders like high mana value commanders were felt like they were not frowned upon but it was hard to play them because if they didn't have protection you were at a huge disadvantage especially if you're not in green because if they get killed once like what are you supposed to do but the protection available was always like hexproof and you know shroud or indestructible and sometimes that just felt obnoxious in that like okay well now i can't even interact so it becomes this like groan at the table that you're playing this higher mana value commander that's supposed to be technically make it more fair to get out but because it can't be removed who cares so what they've done with unique ward types and i'm gonna use sauron the dark lord as my favorite example of this i think sauron the dark lord is one of my favorite design cards that I can remember period. It has multiple interesting abilities. It has multiple fair abilities and so many different areas to attack this with. With the discard, you can do reanimator, you can go all in on a mass. There are so many amazing things to do with this card. It has the, the ring being tempted as, as part of it. Like, there are so many directions to go and what feels like so many fair directions to go and it is just it's a beautiful card but my favorite thing having said all that is the ward the fact that it's ward sacrifice a legendary artifact or creature is one of the coolest lines of text because it opens the there's 
so many cool things where you have to sacrifice specific card types or maybe discard specific tar card types or maybe having these like little baby like almost like offerings you need to make to get rid of some of these more epic giant creatures but it is the coolest thing flavor wise to have i i love it i want to see more of these like cool little hoops because yeah obviously no don't put this on a two or three mana value commander and make it just everybody's getting a headache but when you put it on a six seven eight mana value commander and you have to make people earn the removal for it I, to me i love it i am already a sucker for high mana value commanders and this makes me just even more excited about getting to play them now at number three the number three most bro worthy thing in this set we're going to talk about Cavern Horde Dragon for a second. Cavern Horde Dragon is a 9 mana value thing that's probably going to cost you less depending on how many artifacts an opponent has. And then when it deals combat damage, by the way, Trample, Haste, and Flying, so it's probably going to deal combat damage. You go ahead and make treasures equal to the number of artifacts that a, an opponent controls. And the reason why this is Broadworthy, I don't think this is like, you know, why'd they print it? It's too, but like, no, this is Broadworthy because bro it feels like here's my conspiracy theory time we're going to go down and tank with this one it feels like this was initially the design for dockside extortionists and then like a game of telephone got played and a lot of stuff got misconstrued and we ended up with a dockside by accident because this feels like all of the things that should have happened like it technically can cost you two mana but it could also cost nine it's gonna make you a bunch of treasures based just on artifacts and for one opponent like there are so many things about this it feels like this is what dockside was supposed to be and it feels like either someone got the dockside design and was like you know what i'll make it my imprint or there was a game of telephone that went poorly or whatever but this yeah this is definitely the initial what should have been the design of dockside and it's awesome it's wonderful it's less obnoxious than ancient copper dragon it's like a punisher for other treasure decks like i do find it weird that like the punishment for treasures is now that you just make more we'll get it we'll figure that out eventually but either way what dockside was supposed to be is a beautiful card and a very fun card and thank you for uh making a fun way to create a bunch of treasures and not just a goblin that ruins everyone's happy time now, now number two the number two most bro worthy thing in this set is going to be there and back again and bro this is there's a lot of times that like i feel like everybody has that thought every once in a while where they're like you know what i could be a game designer i could do this i could make cards and then something gets printed and you're like this is why i can't do this because these people are actually they know what they're doing this is one of the coolest designs flavor wise and function wise like of anything ever this saga, the fact that a target creature can't be blocked, the ring tempts, it starts with the ring tempted, and then you actually, you're searching for a mountain because you're going to find this mountain, like flavor, complete win. And then smog is created, but the thing that you create is a token of it because smog didn't actually, you know, exist in the initial books. He's actually from the Hobbit, not the Lord of the Rings. And you see him on like some, like the artist, like to be that in tune with everything where it's just a, he's a, like a mythical creature on a page it's perfect like this is one of the most like flavorful and amazing design cards and it's just like between this and Sauron, like seeing the, the design in this set is just incredible and it was like it was a wake-up call every once in a while i you, you hear me complain all the time about this card does this this card does this i was just complaining about the, com the design of dockside and then i read something like this and i'm like okay yeah these people know what they're doing i i would be terrible at this i don't know why i think i could do it but this card is just wonderful and just yeah whoever came up with this idea thank you for bringing that much flavor into the world now at number one the number one most bro worthy thing in this set for a million reasons this list was built typically i'll just pick a bunch of cards that like make me just feel something in my gut and then just break it down by there start yelling at a wall and figure out what sticks this one was number one and then i worried about the rest of the list later this card's been number one for like a week and a half now it's murkwood bats and it's probably not for the reason you think. Yes, this is an incredibly obnoxious card. Yes, this is even more support for treasures that we didn't need. And it's going to end so many games. And it's just going to be like, oh, well, we saw that one coming. But that's not why I'm venting. Treasures win every game anyway. Who cares? I am mad about how they're representing bats here. Bats are freaking adorable. I don't know if you've ever seen bats, but like they're literally just like foxes or cats with wings. They have the fuzziest, cutest little faces. I just want to scratch their little noses. Have you ever seen a, a freaking bat eat a banana before? Shit's adorable. Like, 
and now you make these things all evil and they're making people lose lives and you're associating them with treasures which people don't like like nah i'm not falling for the i am not falling for the bat smear campaign this little dude i'm sure you know we talk about like i think about earlier rewinding i talked about how i loved how they did all their interpretations that all the characters look great and but except for one except this this Merkwood bat should be adorable it should be holding like little fruit it should be flying around even if it's a vampire bat those things are cute too they got their little piggy noses just stop shit talking bats bruh they're cute and we just gotta just deal with that as a group of people that bats are adorable and that's the way okay better now and that's gonna do it for this week's video it's gonna do it for the top five most bro worthy things from tales of middle earth i am in love with this set i think it's gonna be amazing i can't wait to get my hands on it i hope y'all are enjoying it as well i when it first started with some of the serialized things and the one ring and all that i was like oh gosh is like that gonna be what the focus is but honestly i uh, before i said that i haven't thought about that like almost at all because there's so much just cool stuff for everyone in here i cannot wait to get my hands on it let me know down in the comments below what y'all think is the most bro worthy thing from this set what has you all up in your feels and if there's any other bat lovers out there let me know too shout out to y'all bats are beautiful but plenty of stuff to come until then i'll see y'all next time